Welcome to this tutorial video on Young's Double Slit Experiment. Young's Double Slit Experiment was a famous experiment in the 1800s that helped further um, the cause of light being considered as a wave. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at the experimental setup. Effectively what we have is a screen as you can see on the right hand side and then some distance away we have a double slit. Now this is uh, not to proportion quite often these gaps are only a fraction of a millimetre okay so this is uh, not to proportion but it shows you a chance to understand uh, what happens with path difference and interference so it's a good diagram for that purpose so we have here a slit or a source one and another second slit the source two they're separated by some uh, distance d uh, the other variable we're looking at here is the distance from the slits which is commonly referred to as a slide um, to the screen now we give it the symbol L okay so when this happens we have an interference pattern that generates a sequence of bright and dark fringes or bands on a screen so let's have a look this experiment uses monochromatic light meaning it has wavelengths that are all the same um, laser is perfect for this um, so each wave length coming in is exactly the same as the previous one light diffracts through both slit 1 and slit 2 which is again a a wave property diffraction and creates an interference pattern as we can see on our screen here if we would look at this screen front on we would see this series of bands that are start with a bright in the center then a dark then a bright and a dark uh, moving both uh, upwards and downwards or as you look from the, the screen uh, left and right on the screen so to have constructive interference we need a path difference of n lambda an exact multiple of the wavelength now let's explain this path difference concept. You can see here that the distance from source 1 to point P is shorter than the distance travelled from source 2 to point P. In fact, this extra little distance is how much further light has to travel from source 2 to point P than from source 1 to point P. And that little extra bit of distance is what we refer to as the path difference. So when that path difference is equal to an exact multiple of the wavelength lambda, what we get is a constructive interference, what we call antinodes. These are seen as bright fringes on our screen. On the other side of the coin, when we have a path difference that is equal to an odd multiple of lambda on 2, meaning that the path difference is half lambda, or 1.5 lambda, 2.5 lambda, 3.5 lambda, we have effectively a crest from one wave source interacting with a trough from another wave source and we get cancellation or destructive interference these points are sometimes referred to as nodes so we have nodes here at these dark points on our interference pattern and they represent n minus a half times lambda as a path difference or what we like to say as an odd multiple of lambda on two so let's look at some of the variables I want to consider how does the spacing of these fringes delta x change when three variables in this practical investigation are changed. And the first variable interested in is slit separation. So this is not the width of the slit, but rather the distance from the center of slit one to the center of slit two, the slit separation. We want to know what effect does this change have upon the fringe spacing? How much does it stretch out our fringe or compress our fringe? Does it make the delta x, the distance between two bright fringes, smaller or larger? So here's some of the results we got when we traveled to the Australian synchrotron. Each one of these has the same wavelength, the green wavelength, the 532 nanometers. Each of them have a slide that is 1,000 millimeters or a meter from the slide to the screen. However, we're changing the slit separation. So this is the interference pattern created for slit 1, slit 2, slit 3, slit 4, and slit 5. Now there's not an obvious difference in the spreading of those particular patterns, but when we graph them what we find is as we increase our slit separation the fringe sizes or the width between each successive fringe drops, fringe drops down or is reduced so we have here an inverse relationship so we can say that the fringe spacing delta x is inversely proportional to the slit separation meaning if we increase the slit separation we compress our interference pattern and we have a smaller delta x a second variable analysis is what happens when we change the length from the slide to the screen. So here's our interference patterns. Each one of these is using the same slit separation, setting one on the slide that we used at the Australian synchrotron. And 
but we've also got the same coloured wavelength, the green light of 332 nanometers. However, we're moving from 600 millimetres or 60 centimetres from the slide to the screen to 700, to 800, to 900, to 1000. And we can see that the, the spacings are actually, the delta x is getting larger as we go along. This pattern is a lot more spread than the original. If we graph this, we see a nice linear proportionality, meaning that the fringe size, the delta x, increases as the distance from the screen to the slit, l, increases. So mathematically, the delta x, the spacing between each fringe, successive fringe, increases as we increase our distance between the slide and the screen L. So they are directly proportional to one another. Our final consideration is what happens when we change the wavelength of our light when the lambda increases. What effect does a different wavelength have upon the fringe spacing delta x? So here we can see a green wavelength of 352 and this is its pattern, its interference pattern, compared to a larger wavelength of 635, the red. And clearly, this pattern has been stretched out considerably with a larger wavelength. So once again, it would appear that the greater the wavelength, the greater the fringe spacing. So the two would be proportional. And so we have the fringe spacing is directly proportional to the wavelength of the light. So delta x is proportional to lambda. I hope this has um, clarified some of the typical variation questions you get with interference patterns on exams. And um, keep working hard, and thanks for watching.